how, where are we at with this bad boy? Right, the reason that covers off is because she's been towed a few times. And actually, do you know what? In fairness to this beautiful car, the last thing it did was a track day. A track day of all things. I didn't take it out, actually. I, I went to the Emission Motorsport track event. Jaguar lent me a car. Uh, but I was ready to do some track work, but the brakes are bollocks, aren't they? They're just no good. In fact, that's the next thing. At the end of this film, we'll discuss what to do with brakes. We need a carbon ceramic option. I reckon we're going to find a way of developing it. I've thrown my whole life at this car. I might as well carry on. So, let me just op open the bonnet for you, right over there. So, this is the most impressive part of the car. Tell us about this intake. Right, um, well, obviously, Swift Performance, UK supplier um, of the uh, Infinity Design uh, intakes, they, they got in, in touch as soon as they found out that we were doing some bits um, and sort of said, does Chris want a nice airbox for his car? And There's a nice airbox, there's a nice airbox though. Yeah, it's nice. So, so do we get any more power with that or not? Not 100% sure, but you know, you've got double the intake size there, you know, yeah. much bigger filter. Uh, and the whole thing is, is one big plenum. So the whole thing should be breathing, don't know in terms of power. Uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, Sal at Infinity Design, he'll be able to let you know, but I don't know the ins and outs, but yeah, shit, it's nice, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's beautiful, isn't it? it and it, it does sound, it's a, when I first heard it, I thought it's too quiet. Yeah. But now, after 500, 600 miles, in fact, more, 1,000 miles, I think it's the right noise. Yeah. Because you don't want too much. Yeah. And intake noise is the future. Yes. You don't irritate other people. Ready? Intake noise is the future. Exhaust noise is the past. Exhaust noise winds people up. <laughs> this is for your own pleasure. <laughs> it's a difference between watching an adult movie from the privacy of your bedroom to displaying it on the side of the House of Parliament. You don't want to share those things with people. You do them on your own. Do them on your own. <laughs> right. So that, that is the fanciest bit of the car. And even down here, there's a little sign there, though. I don't know whether you can focus on that. It might be a cutaway. Can there, there is a typo in there as well, actually. There is, yeah, I can see there is. I wouldn't go too close on it because uh, it does actually say uh, S58. It does, yeah. <laughs> Not S85. S85. <laughs> but we like that. That means it'll be like that penny black that's the wrong, that's the wrong shape. It's yeah. valuable of the lot. <laughs> so, bonnet it down. I mean, she's a bit rough around the edges. Everything is beginning to perish. So all the rubbers, for example, in between the headlights uh, and bodywork, they've gone. The front bump is just, it's just sagging. It's just, it's, it's drooping like a male ball sack over our tail. <laughs> it's just sort of dropping down by a couple of mils every single week. But I'm not too worried about that. Let's start here. Can we, can we, can we stick them up? Yeah, absolutely. Right, Enzo, out of the way. That's Enzo. Get off the fucking ramp. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had an interesting discussion about there was a front axle noise. The front tires, had this sort of weird feathering. I don't know what, it wasn't just me either. They'd, they'd worn, yeah. weirdly, because the, the tracking was all out. Um, but I was pretty insistent the wheel bearings were gone. And I, I think for once I was proved right because it did need some wheel bearings, didn't it? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'll tell you why I was a bit cheeky with that. I had so many people contact me online on Instagram and say, check the wheel bearings at the front, they go. Yeah. So it wasn't just, that's why my suspicions were aroused, but it was noisy. So we've done that. It's suspension that we've had a look at here. So we go any further or not? And then we put a look underneath. Yeah, yeah, we go right the way up. I don't know how far into it I am in terms of money, but I'm going to have a look. We're, we're probably not far off. I think we're 10 grand in now. It's not bad for two months. And we've not even looked at the engine yet. I've just, I've just casually mentioned with a sense of pride how much oil she's burning and Dara's face dropped. So I, I suspect we might be having a look at the engine next. But then I'll have a new car. So. What have we done at the front end? Can you spot the new bit? There she is. Now, I'd always been told that these cars were very expensive in terms of engine and gearbox. I hadn't stopped to consider for a minute that they're quite heavy uh, and they're going to have perished bushes. And because BMW is BMW, they don't sell the bushes. You've got to buy the complete arm with the bush. Or you can try and buy an aftermarket bush. But we tried a bit of that, didn't we? Yeah, and no you good. You sort of lose some of the m 5 appeal. BMW did a good job of sort of balancing performance with comfort. And I think if you go too far down the performance route, you wreck it. You can see how bad the tracking was because that tire is completely lunched on the inside. Is that a new tire? No. That's, that, that's, that's the old tire. It's isn't not it? far off, to be fair. No. Um, so uh, that's the new arm there. That was both sides, wasn't it? Yep. That gave us, some, that gave us our tracking back. Uh, but otherwise, it's quite, that's the rest of it is standard up front, isn't it? We've left it as it was. That's it, yeah, right. that's it. So have a look under here, Nilo. 
Farah, so you tell us what you've done. Right, well, I mean, so, so bottom arm bushes, absolutely. They were gone? Rooted, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we've done, done both arms, we've done the top arms, uh, you know, all, basically all the arms have either had been rebushed or replaced with all new bolts. Um, is, that, is that common on one of these? Yeah, these bottom arm bushes are, are really common to go, especially that one there yeah. up at the front. That's taking all the load. Uh, it takes it? all the load, yeah, and they just, they just perish and, and just increase tyre wear and makes the car feel a bit wallowy. So brand new bushes there, new bolts. Uh, we've done new bearings on the, on the hub it's just yeah whatever we could we've replaced it basically what next on the chassis it looks okay to me i think we're getting a bit of a noise from this yep item here <laughs> rebuild the diff yeah yep uh, yeah. we can do that um i mean what else we could put a nice spicy diff into it you know something a little bit different <laughs> would you keep does it keep the same diff ratio or not yeah keep the same ratio because yeah. actually i found that there's a reason why it's seven speed and it's got the torque it's got it's well matched yeah, yeah. if it had one fewer gears it wouldn't be the same car yeah but you're also going to drink so much more fuel on the motorway you know cruising yeah because it's economical it's already <laughs> it's it's, it's it is a total shambles in terms <laughs> of fuel. i think it does if you're going if you calm it right back it does 14. oh yeah what are you expecting 22. no i've seen like 18 20. Hashtag lies. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag fake news. Um, so, I think the chassis is okay. Can we talk about the gearbox? We can't see the gearbox. We can talk about the gearbox from underneath this truck, from underneath this tray here. Okay, so the gearbox, and I can show you some photos now of it stranded. I was driving down the M4. Uh, we've discussed it. I've got some cutaways there we can put in as well. We looked at the parts. We'll put all those in now. Mm. Um, the it started the clutch started to slip and it was because the slave the boot on the slave had failed hadn't it effectively well, we reckon what what happened is there's there's a clutch throw sensor called the pldc sensor and we reckon that failed it threw the pin out too far on the slave cylinder it basically popped the hydraulic system threw fluid all over the clutch and just impregnated everything so and a clutch is quite cheap for one of these. <laughs> How much is a clutch plate for one of these? Oh man, um, it's, it's 750 quid, 700 it? quid, yeah. That yeah. was without the vodka and tonic as well. So mm. it's, again, it's an absolute shambles. Everything that breaks is about a grand on this car. I, I, and I, I've added, I paid 27 grand for it. I'd be lucky to get 24 for it now, <laughs> I would have thought. But, it, but it's, it's worth it for a level. But anyhow, the, the, so the gearbox came apart, yep. new clutch in. New clutch in, new slave PLDC sensor and a a, you know the, the hydraulic slave cylinder as well so that that was a, a few thousand pounds how how long do you expect that gearbox to operate well for oh I'm, it's, it's kind of anyone's guess it's an smg i want, I want the <laughs> <laughs> it's anyone's guess it's an smg so do you, do you view yourself as being as much in the social work business as you you know in a care aren't you yeah really? yeah 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 it's like a retirement home for broken yeah, you have fights. to go into it with an open mind don't you a hundred percent yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they are magnificent. I am totally addicted to it. I love, I actually love that V10 with the SMG. It works well because you always have to do something and it always offers you the opportunity to smooth the driving out. If you're better, the car is better. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah, you have to drive to the gearbox. Yeah. 100%. And you can, you can learn little strategies with how you can make the clutch engage by about two mil of just, throttle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I like, just, it's stuff to do. Keep yeah, it busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I love all that. Yeah. But this, it does worry me that she's burning a bit of oil. Yeah. So what should it be? A litre every... I mean, look, I've seen like a litre in a thousand miles, but that's kind of on the... But if I'm driving it hard, hard... Yeah. A bit more? Yeah, a bit more. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I'm a million miles off that. Yeah. Well, I did. I drove to Munich in mine in May, and that was three and a half thousand mile round trip. Yeah. And that did use probably five litres of oil, but we were you know, Thank pushing you. on down, down the autobahn. I'm just getting pissed on here. Yeah, it's the it's the aircon um, condenser. aircon condenser fluid popping out, so it's distilled. Okay. Don't worry. Okay, <laughs> let's um let's just drop it down and have a look. Speaking of oil, you'll like this. First of all, that works better than on all the modern cars I've driven because it doesn't have too many safeties on it. You can sort of roll to a stop, hit the button down by your shin, opens up every time. This is standard BMW <laughs> offering apparently because. Um, she likes a bit of oil. I'm, I kid you not, I'll be through that by the summer. <laughs> Cotswold BMW again did me a lovely deal. 
It's a great boot shape as well, isn't it? Mm, it's good. Look at this, you've got everything. You've got your mat for the dog, golf shoes. Road rate, no, it's a, uh, it's pitching wedge just for chipping for the dog, a little bit of chip. Um, it's a fantastic practical car. That's gone. How do we, is that a common problem? That's probably that? going to be the, I think the receiver is a little bit bent to one so side. So we can actually make that work again, can yeah, we? Yeah, we can make that work. Okay. Yeah. Right. You can even put the seats down and sleep in the back of it. You can, yeah. What, what are you saying about my height, boss? Another thing that was not discussed when I bought it was how good the standard hi-fi is. Yeah, it's really it's good. Got really, has it got subs under the seats? It's got stuff? subs under the seats, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the other thing about this car. The infotainment system uh, has been altered because one of the main um, barriers of entry for the old car club, for many people, including me, is the old Apple CarPlay, or just being able to get into a car and your phone talking to the car. It's possible, okay? Uh, a man called Mr. 12 Volt, okay, got hold of me on Instagram. Instagram has a big part to play in all of these Project E cars, and he said, we can fix that. Bloody hell, has he fixed it? It's fantastic. Watch this. Right. Maybe, Milo, you should get in the car with that and look at the screen, and I'll get in the other side. Actually, Dara can get in the other side. He can do it. Okay, you sure? You okay, yeah. right. Let's move that seat back for him. That's boot shit. Yeah, it's been there for days. It's Is it fucking seagulls? That's some serious. Yeah, yeah. It will corrode everything. Yeah. I had a Renault Megane test car. I lived on that road weirdly three houses before. Yeah. And I parked a yellow Megane uh, that we had as a sort of long loner. Renault Megane story, right? Car. And he loved it. He used to drive it like a complete tit. Uh, it burnt the roof out. Oh, really? No, they eat these berries. Uh, what, yeah. burnt the carbon? Yeah. It, it, or burnt the paint? No, it wasn't. It didn't have a carbon roof. It had a normal roof, but it was, it was Donald Ducked afterwards. It's back to BMWs, but it did. It rootled the roofle. Here we go. So, look at that screen there. How cool is that? So, we've got, if we go to communication, I've still got a normal BMW iDrive from 2007, or well, this car was new in 07, wasn't it? Um, and it, uh, it's fundamentally... At the time, we thought it was shit, but actually, it's not bad, I drive. It's better than most modern systems now, so we were wrong about that. But if you press a particular button, if you go to entertainment and press CD, it takes you into another world. So, what's he called, Mr? Uh, CarPlay Direct, Mr. Car 12 Volt. CarPlay Direct, Mr. 12 Volt, has fitted this. So now I've got completely functioning uh, Apple CarPlay. It's not the latest, latest one, but it's bloody good. It works really well. You don't have a touch screen, but it, just it works on the rotary control. Look, let me show Neil, show my hand operating the rotary control. <laughs> oh, it's cool. Look at that. So you use this, and it, that is a really nicely engineered piece of billet, and it just, it, the clicker is, still feels high quality. Yeah, it's nice. So you can roll around. So I've got full Apple CarPlay when I get in the car. You have to, you have to log on to two Bluetooth uh, connections, but it's not a problem. And the sound, the quality of the hi-fi is right up there. It's really, really good. So I get in the car. And I've got a modern car. I've got ancient fuel consumption, but I've got a modern car. <laughs> that, I think that puts a lot of people off old cars, but it's entirely fixable by using, and I'm gonna put the link up now, his Instagram here, it's, it's there, you see it, okay? We've done it for the, for the air intake thing, and we're gonna do it for this as well. Um, the rest of it is pretty good, the cabin's fine. Uh, there is a bit of wear in places, I can't really do much about that. I think you just have to leave the patination uh, of a car as it gets older. I am still, and I've spoken to this man about this, I don't drive it on these. I still don't. I don't like them. I drive it on that. And I want to create a wand that comes out to about here. But you've still got to be able to access all this. So we, there's a, we are going to do it. Okay? Yeah. We yeah. are going to do it. Yeah. Because I think it'd be quite cool to have it. I want to pretend that I'm, you know, We've got a nice still. old, uh, nice old DTM. Uh, you got it. Like golf ball. Okay. Yeah. Right, we'll do it. Uh, Aircon's good. And, and actually, these seats are... They're a bit confusing to me. They, for me, were one of the reasons that put me off buying one of these cars, because you'd see them advertised, wouldn't you? And that bolster always collapses on the outside. It looks terrible, but it's the best seat BMW's ever made. Such a good seat. I know, and so I, I, I didn't celebrate it enough. It's multi-adjustable, like I discussed on that first video, and everything works. All the, it's got the side bolsters that hold you in place. Watch this, Nilo. Watch this, you'll like this. I was playing with this with my daughter the other day. No, no, my son, sorry. So I turn the, you have to fire her up. Oh, got to start the engine for this. Right, watch this. Okay, so if I go to 
go back, I can demonstrate how good this is now. So I go back to my iDrive and I go, oh, menu, home. And I go to M drive, seat back. Watch this now, watch this bit here. Ready? Oh, it won't do it unless you go around the corner. Unless you move in, yeah. Oh, no, I can do it with this. Oh yeah, it will hold you in on the on the side watch controls. It, it. Yeah. How far that goes? It's what, like it's what that okay. What what that should say on the dash is not sport. It should say cuddle, because it is like having a big cuddle. You know when you give me those good night cuddles? Oh, yeah. It's like one of those. It's, nice. it's like that. It's lovely. So, um, everything else about the cabin is is not too bad. I thought they'd it wear worse. Everything that had a sort of rubber coating on it. Yeah, that all goes. <laughs> it's all gone. Yeah. Yeah, on there, on the door handles. Well, of, of all the old BMWs, <laughs> where does this sit then for you? This is one of the ultimate cars that they've ever produced. Yeah, in touring format. It just it's so cool. You can do 180 mile an hour with a dog in the back. Yeah. I mean, not that you should, but you could. <laughs> not that I have. <laughs> um, so, so, how much further do we go with it then? I think we've, we've pretty much fixed, I mean, engine is the next thing. Engine's it? the next thing, but look, it uses a bit of oil. It just means it's the constant oh, oil system. I need you to have a good look at my ring. At your what? <laughs> <laughs> right, now move in here. I want you to have a good look at my ring. <laughs> now, tell me, and the viewers, why those are important and why looking at them matters. No, rod bearings. Nice. Okay, right, so yeah. imagine that no one knows what's going on with these engines and what goes wrong with right, them. Right, 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 okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, well, the, these are held uh, basically inside the conrod, yeah. which is bolted to the crankshaft. Yeah. Uh, and these are the uh, sort of the bearings that, that float on, you know, oil pressure. Yeah. So they're like this. You've got your conrod there and your piston up here. Yeah. Uh, and they sort of spin around like that. And yeah, well, these are really famous for, for wearing quite prematurely. Do you think BMW knew how much they were going to wear? They must have done. Yeah, I mean, they must have done. Because they must have run the engines to 100,000 miles when they tested them. Yeah, but I mean, there were other M cars, like the E46s, early ones, they had a recall on, on the rod bearings Did they? for precisely that. So, you know, they were the, the first iteration of E46s were all being called back because yeah. rod bearings were, were failing. So, but yeah, you know, they, they just rubbed through onto it. Like so so the, the, this engine had done 90,000 miles, I'm told, when these were changed. So what happens is, the nerds out there, of which I'm now one, will will go and have a good look at the bearings. You want to see the bear, the used bearings, to see how much wear the engine had. These aren't bad, are they? No, they're not. You bad. think they're pretty good? Not for ninety thousand. We've no. seen we've seen ones at like forty thousand that have been almost spun. Well, have been spun. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. This is what happens when you buy one of these cars. You start, rather than watching TV or talking to your friends, you look at old bits of metal. Also, when Darren showed me this, because he is, he is like the ultimate nerd, he went, he went and these are the original BMW ones. I, <laughs> I can tell that because of that little flange out there. I was like, yeah. little stamp. I was like, I might, might not go for a pint with you. <laughs> <laughs> can, you can you show me that bit again? Where is that bit? Yeah. Uh, the little so on on the is back. That you, notch, like the, the, the emboss the embossment on the back is is it's the, for that that means it's factory. Yeah, there you go. Is it what the the number or the triangle? Both. Yeah. So so that's that's the not triangle. That's, that's the original original rod bearing. That is a rhombus. Mind you, it is quite grey. Is it? Yeah, it's quite grey. So they have been worn a lot. Um. No, it's definitely a factory one. Is it? Yeah, definitely. Okay. But then you've also got. Well, then we've got the old broken valve. It had, did have a broken valve spring. But again, the, the owner was totally honest about that. So we, we've got a, what, another E60 in at the moment with exactly the same thing. Another broken valve spring. Um, so it came in with zero compression on cylinder nine, uh, and yeah, basically the, the the valve is just sort of flapping around. So those stay in here as a kind of permanent. Uh, that, that's, that is basically the service history you want on a car, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's much more important than the book. <laughs> the, the book, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so people can fiddle the book. They're going back in there <laughs> for future generations to pour over. Uh, they can live in there. I think that just about covers it, doesn't it? I think so. We've done yeah. the interior. Yep. Apple. So what we've got is a car that now has a gearbox that works, 
a chassis that is really good on the road in the UK. It's nice and comfortable, but it's got enough supports to deal with all that power. I've got an engine that sounds fantastic f for now. Um, <laughs> and I'd like to leave it as it is, really. I don't want to go much further with it. If you would take the engine apart, could you get any more power or not? Um, not a really. Bit. Not a lot, a little bit. You know, re a remap will, will, will get you a few more horsepower, but, but not a lot. This was mapped oddly, this car, wasn't it? Yeah, it was quite aggressive. Was it? Yeah. Is that why it was so fast? Yeah. <laughs> <That's the case. laughs> it, it's actually, really you've got most of the performance back. It hasn't lost much, has it? Really? Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, no. good. Well, obviously, because the airbox that's on it has had to be mapped. So, um, yeah, it's, it's probably similar performance, if not. Would you dare to open that? Yeah. Would you? Whoa, 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 whoa. 90s, sorry, 90s or noughties BMW. If you open that or the sunroof, they never close again. Oh, go on, do it. If you do it, you've got to fix it. It's, it if you break it, you've got to fix it. Piece of cake. There she is. What, are you telling me? You can see where that's, look, you yeah. can see where that's already had a go in itself. Yeah, but that's all right, because what that is, is you've got a little, little spike I there. know, but I had a... So basically... I know, but I had an E34, yeah. and it never worked properly. Oh, okay. Go on. That's risky. Sunroof. You'll like this. Oh, don't touch that, it's raining. Oh, no, you'll like this. You'll like this. Sunroof. I haven't got it here. I was so concerned about the sunroof yeah. that before I opened it, I went, I went and bought a tin of oil so that when I opened it, I oiled everything to make sure it would close again. Yeah, but, okay. And it, it works now. It's normally little micro switches in there and there's like anti-trap switches and all sorts in there. So, uh, so should I not use it? No, use it. Just not on a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I think we're just about covered there. I'm I'm so pleased I bought it. It's a mega bit of kit. Yeah, There's nothing cool. else like it. Yeah. I could have had a new E63 or an RS6 or something. But my calculation is this: if I can get two years using it quite regularly before it goes badly bang, yep. then that's the depreciation on one of those new estate cars, isn't it? Really, you're going to lose thirty, forty thousand in two years. Yep. If at the end of it I own this, yep. then that's the gamble with old cars. Yep. So you're going to see it quite regularly. Awesome. Can make me a cup of tea, please? Yep. Let's go. It also sound better than the new things. Well, I've, it feels like we've reached the end point. Actually, no, we haven't. You've got to deal with that shitter now. Oh. Yeah, you see, you thought it was over the BMWs, but the E28 is also being recommissioned, and that, that was in a shambolic state, but that is another video.